Hi, and welcome to episode 126 of the Heartland Knits podcast. My name is Vicki, but you can find me as Heartland Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. And today is Sunday, November 22nd, 2015. I'm recording a little bit earlier than usual. I woke up really early this morning, so I got up and went to early church, and then I treated myself to a little um, chai at Starbucks on the way home. So I put it in my um, Jenny the Potter mug, which I got this when she was just starting out. She was just selling things in a store in Minneapolis. Um, so it's a little bit different shape than her, her current mugs are, but it has um, a spindle on it. And then the other side has this like dark, dark blue um, sheep. And I used to just use this for kind of holding spindles or, you know, putting little things in, but I just decided I needed to start using it for what it was intended. So anyway, this is a knitting podcast. I have some new things to show you, and I want to tell you about the really great day that I had yesterday, um, but I'll put that off to the end in case you're just here for the knitting because this is a knitting podcast. So, what's on my needles? I have a, pro a project that I started last August, and I think I showed it once, but it was one of those that sort of got cut because of, of time. I do try to edit the podcast down to around 30 minutes. I think it got, I got cut. So it's, it's pretty far along, and it's not going to show... Um, too much because I have it on a straight needle. And this is a lace shawl that I started. And um, so I'm just going to hold it up and hopefully you will be able to see some of the patterning. Um, it starts up at the top and um, does this sort of look. And then if I hold my hand there, maybe I can. Um, anyway. The yarn I'm using is Madeleine Tosh Lace Weight in Tarte. It's, it's such a pretty color, and I've had this skein for several years. I started a shawl with it one time, um, and then d decided I didn't like it in that, in that pattern, and ripped it out, and it's kind of been sitting there. Um, but it's a, such a pretty color. I have it on my little yarn buddy from Sun Valley Fibers, so you can see how much I've used. Um, it's a they're pretty large skeins. It's 875 yards, I think. And the pattern, which was hard to see, is a is a kind of wool version of a uh, Niebling Herbert Niebling doily. It's called Aster. It's from the Gross and Kleine Decken. Um, little pamphlet. Um, I was going to bring it over here. I looked over in the basket that it's in is over there. Um, I was going to bring it over to show you um, if you've never, well maybe I'll go get it. I'll be right back. So Herbert Niebling was a German designer from back in the 1920s, 30s kind of era. And he just made the most beautiful lace um, kind of doilies and tablecloths and, and things like that to use with thread, but we can kind of change them around a little bit, and use wool, and they come out to be pr really pretty lace shawls. So it comes from this folio. It's um, Grossa and Klein and Decken. And so it, this is just, just like a little folder, and what it has is... Um, just kind of a little a little booklet with kind of different um, designs like all through it. Um, the, the writing is all in German, but you really don't need sort of 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 that. It will kind of specify the name of the design and not all the designs that are like pictured in these little booklets are. Um, you know, have accompanying charts because back then some of them were done 
sort of like you mailed in, you know, something and, and got the chart back. So then, so what you do is um, it has, in that folder, it has great big, like, fold out, like, charts with all of the charts for the different um, designs included. And so you can look, it usually says on the little, um, which, which, uh, the name of, of the, the design and sort of, it has a number. So you look for that number and then you can find the chart that you want to use. And you don't really need a lot of, um, to, to have to translate kind of the German because if you think of there, most of them are sort of round. Um, there, there are some other shapes and, and things, but this is a round um, design. And if you think of, of a, like a circle shawl, um, many times they are done sort of like, it, like a section so that you have, you know, different um, sort of wedges of, of a pie. And so, like on this one, you can see this is sort of one wedge of a pie. So you have to just repeat that however many times. And you can look at the picture and sort of count the motifs. You know, some of them have like eight wedges or ten wedges or whatever. And so then you know if you're going to cast on for a circle, you know to, you know, how wherever, how, however many stitches it starts with, you know that's how many stitches you need to cast on. And so um, that's kind of just the bare basics of, of using a, a, a different, um, you know, chart in a different language, you know, something like this. But the charting symbols are basically um, the same, like once you sort of get the hang of it. Actually, I really like the um, how clear the, the the charting system is, they use um, a little bit different um, notations for like a knit stitch. It's it's that little dark. It's like a square inside of the um, square, in, a dark square inside of the square, and that denotes the knit stitch. And then all the empty squares are just placeholder, like no stitch um, squares, which it just it's easier on the eyes it's easier to read a lot of times um, the current charts are you use um, the empty box as the knit stitch and then you fill in the ones that you don't use and those I find are harder to sort of follow but anyway there's a few stitches that uh, Nibling uses that are not um, kind of you know, you look at it and think, what's that? Like a criss there's like a crisscross one that he uses quite often. And, there, you know, there are sources online that you can look those up. I think there's, you know, back when I started knitting uh, the Nieblings, there was a, a Yahoo um, group that kind of had pages and, fi you know, files with all the, the different ones in their uh, um, pages. There's I'm, there's a, a Ravelry Niebling group, so... So anyway, I am doing this one, as you see, I'm not doing it round, I have it on a straight needle. And it's, it's. I like to keep them on straight needles as long as I can. You can see if when I really shove this together, I've, I've still got room. Um, so I like to keep them on as, as long as I can before moving it over to a circular. I find it faster to have the work kind of underneath my hands and not have to deal with moving stitches over a cable join. No matter how nice of a join it is, it's still, you have to like maneuver your stitches a lot more than when you have them on straights. And honestly, I knit faster on straights. So this week, I think at the beginning of this week, I was probably up here. I think I did about half of, of um, like what, how much, you know, the current um, state of this is. So um, I have, I don't know, maybe 20 rows left on the chart. Oh, <laughs> I, um, so I'm not doing it in the round. So I'm doing this so it will be a little bit over 
half. It's not going to be exactly half. I did, um, you know, you added an extra couple um, repeats on, so it'll be a slight, not a crescent, but just a, you know, slightly over half. Um, so I, I did that with the lira that I made about a year and a half ago. It was a, a blue one. And I really liked how that came out. That shawl went to the raffle at knitting camp um, that summer. So I knew how much yarn that I used for that. And that Lyra has about, I don't know, 45 more rows than the chart that I'm using here. Um, but I also had more yarn um, for Lyra. This had 875 yards, so I I didn't want to cut it so close that I was worried about running out of yarn. Um, commercial yarn, this yarn, I'm not as concerned about using every last bit as I do when I'm knitting with hand spun. So if I end up with some extra, that'll be okay with me. But yet I, I want a, a like a decent sized shawl out of it. So I'm going to knit to the end of the chart and then kind of see where I am with you know how much yarn that I have left and then decide if I want to just sort of continue on in, in whatever the, the, you know, that patterning or if I want to put on maybe a sideways edging or if I just want to end it there, I'm, I'll just kind of see where I am at that point and, and uh, you know, decide. So that's where I am with that project. It's the Aster by Herbert Niebling. Herbert Niebling. That, that project was my carrot for the other project that I've worked on this week, which is my hand-to-hand -hand cardigan. Yes, I kept going on it. So this is the hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand cardigan by Elizabeth Zimmerman that I was not so sure I was going to keep going on. And I am this far along. Here is the line where I picked up stitches around the top and I knit. It's about six inches um, of garter that I knit. So that was one full skein of the uh, Bartlett yarns, which is the, the uh, yarn that this is made out of. And the color is called Lake Blue. So I decided to keep going and um, set myself a goal of five ridges every day. And when I got my five ridges done, then I could knit the lace, which I love knitting lace. I think that that's my favorite thing to knit, especially one like this where you're just following a chart and you just keep going. It has a, you know, a one side of, of uh, patterning and then, you know, a kind of pearl rest row on the back. It's my favorite. Um, so this, I thought I'm going to, I probably won't show it to you kind of every week because now it's just going to like hopefully keep growing longer and longer. But I did want to tell you uh, about what happened um, when I I had, last week I had just sort of picked up stitches and I think I had done maybe one one or two ridges. I think I just picked up st the stitches and then like knit back. So I looked at the pattern and uh, uh, Lisbeth, you know, clever, clever lady. She, um, it has kind of deep armholes, this sweater. I'm, I'm knitting this to be sort of a, a kind of winter coat when it's not too, too cold. And so it has sort of deep armholes, which is, which is good because you usually have something on underneath there that might be a little bulky, you know, if you have another sweater on or something. And she did this clever thing where she did short rows um, uh, you know, across the, the fronts and the backs so that to eliminate sort of extra bulk underneath the arms. So when you have a kind of a drop shoulder garment, um, you usually end up with a whole bunch of like bunching underneath your arms because there's just extra material. And so she cleverly had you do short rows to eliminate that. 
So I did the short rows, you know, around the whole thing, and then kind of did a, a, a ridge back, and I um, had it on bigger needles, and I um, tried it on. And because of, you know, you've got all this material, and it's sitting on your lap, and maybe too because, you know, my hands were a little, like, stressed from the knitting on the, the with the big needles and the kind of, uh, you know, yarn that's hard on the hands. I, I uh, thankfully measured my gauge and I had my swatch and it was coming out. My gauge was shifting because, you know, when you have all this kind of bulk on your lap, my hands are sitting up higher than kind of when you're just like doing the swatch. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but when you think of you know, all the way around, it ended up like a couple inches too big, which I really did not want. So I thought, well, I could tear out those like couple inches because by the time the short rows were done, it was, um, you know, maybe, I think there were maybe 10 ridges um, all around almost the whole thing. I didn't want to tear it out and do it over again. And I didn't want to just kind of decrease all those stitches away because then I thought it would like put kind of puckery and, and show. So I what I ended up thought, doing is I established, here's my my underarm. This is, it's like shows a hole here. That was just because I ran out of yarn when I was sewing the, the sleeve seam. So um, that was my exact underarm there. I'll put my finger there. So I established kind of stitches like right on either side of those the at the at the uh, kind of with the underarm stitches that I had put on hold and I started decreasing sort of every ridge on, on either side of those until I decreased away the, the amount of stitches so I did that on on both underarms so what it did was sort of make a little kind of half gusset on the body side um, so I, you know, I tried it on when I, I got to the end of this and I think it's, you know, going to be fine and the, the size is better. I knew it would have been, it's already kind of planned to be a little bit oversized, so I didn't want it like super, super big. So I think that is working. So I have this on like, you know, pretty short needles. These are a 24 inch needle and this is the whole body of of the sweater um, of the and like for the lace I like to keep my my projects on the smallest length cable possible so you can see I have this kind of shoved up on there so I can't really like spread it out a lot but um, it's not in danger of falling off those needles I, you know I can shove it you know the needle tips out and put it in the knitting bag. Um, at this point, I'm not really taking this around, you know, anywhere to knit or anything. So I'm not worried about it coming off of those needles. But having it on, like even a 32 inch cable, just means you have a lot more like shoving the needle, the stitches around and moving them around. And that just takes longer. So I really like to, to uh, keep my projects on the smallest length that um, the stitches can handle. Um, you don't really need to see the whole thing spread out all the time. It, it you know, it, it works fine. So anyway, that was the second project on the needles. And then for show and tell, I have a couple things I want to um, tell you about. The first is the little, um, what I'm using sort of for my shawl. I have a shawl, it's just looking dark. Um, on and this little it looks like a pin is not really a pin I do have a pin um, that matches this this was a set of jewelry that um, was my mom's she loved wearing this bracelet she loved kind of big clunky jewelry and um, this one had sh that my dad gave to her kind of way back before they had kids and they were just starting out and had no money and and she saw it in a window and really liked it and he 
bought it for her. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know, just costume jewelry, but it's, you know, pretty nice costume jewelry. And there are, I just noticed there's a, a rhinestone missing in it a couple places, but so she had, and then she had a great big pin that I was going to wear and it just was like too overpowering. So what this one is, and I have the second one here, is a earring. It's like the old style, like clip on, you know, clip on earrings. Whoop! That this one, the uh, um, bead is not quite secured in there. Um, so anyway, if you have like grandma's, you know, old jewelry or you like to go to, um, you know, antique stores or, or whatever and see like a pretty clip on earring, I kind of just pushed it through kind of the eyelets in the shawl. And this is a, a, a figuring weight shawl. This is Tosh Marino light that I'm wearing. So it's, you know, thick enough. I don't know that I would do this with lace weight. But anyway, it's been holding it like all morning. So there's that. And then I received a pattern um, this this week and is a gift. And she also is wants to give a gift of one to all of you. So this is a new contest. Um, I'm going to put a thread up in the Ravelry group, which is Friends of Heartland Knits. And you can enter to win. You have to be a member of the group. Um, and there will be a question of some type. I'm not really sure what it's going to be yet. But anyway, this is a hat pattern by um, Melissa Transrom. It's called Color Tracks. And this is a picture of it. That's Melissa. But it is a, um, a two, well, she's got several versions. She's got like a two color version. And then she's got um, one that is a two color, but one is a solid and one is sort of a kind of a striping yarn or, you know, striping yarn. And then she has one that has, I think, five colors that she used kind of a set of mini skeins um, on. But it, it's so it's a, a at least two color um, pattern, but it's not stranded. So if you have that, so I know a lot of people have that kind of fear of, of stranded knitting, um, but it kind of gives that look of, of stranded knitting, but it's not stranded at all. It is very cleverly done using sort of the kind of method that the bohus knitters used to kind of bring this like the second color up into the row of the first color um, and it, it very cleverly done it has kind of a, a hemmed edge so that it's doubled over you know by the ears and it looks you know nicely nicely written and um, what's one thing I thought was really nice is in the materials she tells you sort of the exact amounts that she used for each color so that, you know, not just like a skein of, of blue and a skein of white, um, so that if you wanted to use scraps, you could sort or you wanted to use hand spun, you could sort of estimate, do I have enough of, of this, this second color that I want to use and, and sort of like figure it out. So she gives you, you know, that information, which is nice. Um, so if you would like to win this, this pattern, go on over to the Ravelry group and I will have a thread up for that. And then I wanted to tell you about this great event I went to um, yesterday. It was put, it was the annual luncheon put on by the Garden Club here in my town. And it's their kind of main fundraiser. They um, give scholars, two scholarships to the high school where I um, graduated from. And it was, a, it was just a lovely time. There were about 150 women, I or maybe there was one man there. Um, and it was, they had a lot of kind of, you know, baskets of raffled items. They had an actual auction with an auctioneer. I don't think I've ever been someplace where, you know, they had, uh, you know, just a few items, you know, the really nice like jewelry and, and things that were donated um, by places and, I think that's the first time I've ever been, you know, someplace where there was an actual auctioneer. My friend's mom, um, 
that I was there, you know, with, at their table, um, she bid on this really pretty bracelet and she won. It, it was a turquoise and, and a sterling bracelet. It was so pretty. But the program that they were having was put on by a group from the Milwaukee area that they're reenactors. And it was all about the sort of fashions of the Civil War era. era. And so they were all dressed in costume and they all had made their costumes, or most of them had. And they were, um, you know, they did just a wonderful job of kind of showcasing things and explaining, um, you know, the as, you know, time went on from like maybe the 1830s through the 1860s, you know, how, how the bonnets changed and, you know, uh, different, you know, different things um, just just wonderfully done. They all had, you know, made their dresses and they had the big hoop skirts and, and you know, talked about sort of all the layers of undergarments. They had one, you know, woman who had what they called a sheer on that was sort of the summer dress and she could kind of like tie her sleeves up and she could have sort of the top button unbuttoned, but she still had all the corsets and slips and, you know, all the stuff underneath there um, that she, you know, everybody else um, did. Um, a couple of the people had um, their kids, you know, that came along and um, they, uh, I think most of these people kind of do this like all summer they live in tents and they kind of there's different um, groups where they're reenacting and so the kids come along all summer and you know one lady had you know her three little girls and you know talked about you know how you know they had their little pantaloons and and they were really one sweet. lady who came um she was had a kind of black gown on and a little a little parasol some of the the items that the ladies wore, um, brooches and belts. There was, and her, this lady's parasol were um, period so that they were authentic. And the little parasol was just teeny and would kind of fold up. She, you know, like folded it up really small, but she had a, a veil over her face and it kind of explained the difference between what she was wearing when she first walked out and then she sort of changed to um, show the difference between like what she was wearing and how that showed that she was not in mourning to kind of what the, uh, some, a woman who was actually in mourning and that they had to be kind of the stages of, of a mourning that they were in for like three years after their husband died that they were, um, you know, it, you know, had to wear sort of this veil for the first year. And then at the second, you know, stage, they could wear just a little bit of, of, you know, kind of black jet jewelry and, and, you know, change, you know, just very, very subtly. Um, they, you know, had some under some like kind of coat kind of, um, you know, what, the women and the men would wear and the a uh, little bit on kind of the men's um, different hats that they would wear for different occasions or, or kind of the meeting between them. And then the very last lady who came out um, had um, the, like the kind of classic kind of ball gown with, you know, that was all satin. And um, so anyway, it was, it was just wonderful. They did a, an excellent job of explaining um, what they were wearing and and you know even though that the the dresses might not have been like totally authentic um one lady said she sort of based her dress on um mrs lincoln's dress um that sh that she'd seen in i think a museum somewhere it had not been really um, kept in pristine condition it was a silk dress and this the silk had kind of degraded, you know, I suppose at the time they really didn't know how to um, store things um, to keep them. But so she sort of did a, a, a version. It was just cotton. And, you know, because I'm sure that takes just, 
like yards and yards of material to make kind of one of those big skirts. So, you know, they were not like totally, totally authentic, but they were really, it was really interesting um, to see them, especially, I thought it was interesting, kind of the headpieces and the different bonnets um, that that they were wearing. Because, you know, you see those like sometimes in movies and such, and such but I, you know, just as, as things changed and sort of the meeting, you know, why they were doing the things that they did. So anyway, it was just a lovely, lovely day. I didn't win any door prizes or raffle items or anything. They did have, I did get these little, like some little note cards that they had at the play settings. And they had a group from the university who they have a project um, making compost. So I got a little bag of compost. Oh, well. <laughs> But it was it was a really fun day, so I wanted to to be sure to to uh, tell you about that. And I think that is all that I have. This week is Thanksgiving here in the U.S., so I want to wish all my fellow Americans a really happy Thanksgiving. It is my favorite holiday. Uh, Christmas used to be my favorite holiday until my oldest sister passed away, and then. You know, it was just never the same. Um, but Christmas to me is a religious holiday, and um, Thanksgiving is, you know, something that everybody, no matter, you know, what religion you are, um, can celebrate. And because I think we all have so much to be thankful for. I am very thankful for all of you. Thank you for joining me every week and um, watching the podcast. You know, I don't really do this to sort of market a product or build a brand or any of those kind of things. And, you know, if you do a podcast and you do for those reasons, that's okay. I don't. I just kind of do it for the love of knitting. And so I'm really happy that there you're out there and watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. So I hope all of you have a very very happy Thanksgiving, and until I see you next week, from my heart to yours, happy knitting.